Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with over 167 episodes broadcast on NBC Radio from 1949 to 1953, we bring to you Dangerous Assignment. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment's going to wind up with a native bandit giving me a big break by heaving a knife at me. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth said you wanted to see me. I do, Steve. And don't bother to sit down. Your plane leaves for Malaya in one hour. Malaya? Look, I just got out of one jungle. Don't tell me you're sending me back into another one. That's just what I am telling you, Steve. Aren't you sort of stretching my luck a little? That's the right word for it, all right. Stretching? Yeah. What do you mean? Rubber. A jokester yet? Okay, what's the deal? Steve, take any list of vital war materials. Rubber's near the top. So, what am I supposed to do? Go over to Malay and tap a few rubber trees? You don't have to. They've quite a few thousand natives on the job already over there. No, it's what's happening after the rubber is harvested that we're interested in. Just what is happening? A gang of so-called bandits has been raiding the various plantations, Steve. They're organized and equipped like a small army. They've been setting fire to buildings, terrorizing the natives, and in general interfering seriously with the entire operation over there. I see. Uh, Look, isn't this a matter for the British? Well, they've asked our cooperation in the matter, Steve, and I think the main reason is... There's a rumor that the leader of these bandits is an American. What? To our knowledge, nobody's ever gotten a good look at this leader, or at least lived to tell about it. Hmm. Steve, it's vital to both countries that we smash this gang. Whom do I work with? A British intelligence agent named Willoughby. He's waiting for you in Singapore right now. Steve, get over there. Work with Willoughby, and then go anywhere and do anything that's necessary to put these bandits out of business for keeps. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. The National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, colorful two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you'll find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Just a simple matter of scouring the Malayan jungle to find out who's been burning up a few assorted rubber plantations. And I've got an uneasy hunch that whoever it is has a king-sized hot foot reserved for me. It's Friday when my plane lands in Singapore and I head for the office of the Bridget Agent Willoughby. Thoroughly nasty mess, Mitchell. I understand there's a rumor that the leader of these bandits is an American. Yes, that's the rumor. What it's worth, I don't know. None of the bandits has ever been captured, huh? Not one of the blighters, no. We've set several traps for them, but they've avoided them very skillfully. What sort of traps, Willoughby? Well, we've doubled our patrols in the whole area. We've also converted several of the plantations which haven't yet been attacked into miniature fortresses. Uh, Concealed machine gun emplacements, troops hidden in foxholes, and so on. But they always seem to know which plantations are guarded and which aren't. As I said, their information appears to be amazingly accurate. Yeah. Has anybody ever gotten a good look at this bandit leader? I'm not sure, Mitchell. There's one person who may have. What do you mean, may have? It's a little chap in the next room. Mm. Hey, Mr. Perkins, would you step in here a moment, please? All right. Now, uh, this is Steve Mitchell. Agent from the United States, Mr. Perkins. Steve, Mr. Perkins, an importer. Uh, How do you do? Mr. Perkins? Uh, Would you mind repeating your story to Mr. Mitchell Perkins? Very well. 
As Mr. Willoughby told you just now, I'm an importer, Mr. Mitchell. And in the course of my business, I make frequent trips into the jungles to the north of here. I see. Now, last week, I was staying at a friend's plantation deep in the interior. And suddenly, this gang of bandits attacked the plantation uh, about midnight, as I remember. Go on. My, my friend ran out of the house as soon as he heard the shots. He was killed on the spot. I... Well, apparently the bandits didn't expect there would be anyone else in the house as they didn't enter immediately. They set fire to the outbuildings, and during the excitement, I was able to crawl out of the window and into the jungle. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your experience and the loss of your friend, Perkins, but I don't quite see what connection this has with... Well, it was after my return here to Singapore that my real troubles began, Mitchell. What do you mean? Well, two days ago, I was almost run down on the streets. Well, I'm convinced it was a deliberate attempt on my life. Well, last night I was fired upon. What? Yes, yes, it appears that someone is quite anxious to put Mr. Perkins out of the way, Mitchell. But why? Well, it's my theory that Perkins may have seen the bandit leader in action. But how did they know you were there at the plantation during the raid, Perkins? Well, uh, my coat. In my haste to escape, I left my coat in my room. You see, it had my name in it. I get it. They found the coat and figured out you must have been there and must have seen them. Perkins, did you see any of them? Uh, yes. Uh, well, there was a lot of confusion, of course, but uh -huh. after I slipped into the jungle, I saw several figures in the clearing. Well, now, don't panic about it. Uh, did you get a good look at them? Uh, only a brief one. Was one of them an American? Well, I, I really couldn't say. Remember, it was in the middle of the night, and the only illumination came from the fires they'd set. You think you'd recognize any of them if you saw them again? <laughs> well, that's the same question Mr. Willoughby asked me. And all I can say is that uh, I might. I uh, I don't know. You know, Willoughby, it's pretty obvious to me that this bandit leader is somebody who's known in the interior. It's my notion, too, so, old boy. Yeah, he could figure that Perkins would be making other trips into that country and might spot him, all of which gives me the idea what our one chance of finding him is. You have in mind a trip into the interior for the three of us? Yep. Yes, I've already broached the subject to Mr. Perkins, but uh, he doesn't seem to think very highly of it. Oh? Uh, gentlemen, uh, I'm sure you understand my position. Frankly, I'm not a particularly courageous man. and There have already been two attempts on my life right here in Singapore because of this. And to return to those jungles, it seems to me I'd be inviting my own murder. Yeah, we understand your position perfectly, Mr. Perkins. But I hope that you understand just how important this deal is. Well, I... I These I do, bandits but... are seriously interfering with the production of a raw material that's vital to both of our countries. I know that, Mr. Mitchell. It's just that right I... Right now, you're I... apparently the one man who can put the finger on their leader. I... Oh, I, I don't know Willoughby and I'll to... give you all the protection that's humanly possible if you make this trip with us. I, uh... All right, Mr. Mitchell. Thanks a lot, Mr. Perkins. Yes, I'll second that. How soon can you be ready? Oh, it shouldn't take me long to pack my suitcase. Not more than an hour, I'd say. Very well. We'll leave in an hour, then. We go part way by train, take a jeep as far as we can, and then start out on foot through the jungle. It's hot and damp, and Willoughby's in front, Perkins in the middle, and I'm bringing up in the rear, and all three of us are trying to look in every direction at once. The, these bandits could be hiding anywhere around us. That's a possibility, of course, but I rather doubt it. It seems more likely that their main camp is farther in the interior. Oh, but they may have scouts watching this very trail. Look, why can't we take a boat up the river? We get out in the middle of that river, <laughs> we'd really be making targets of ourselves. No, no, it's safer here in the jungle. Oh, 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 oh dear, what was that? Oh, a bird or an animal sounded like. Oh, it sounded like somebody getting killed. Take it easy, Perkins. Mm -hmm. How much farther to the first plantation on our list, Willoughby? Oh, it can't be more than a mile or so. Another mile of this jungle? Oh, I, I wish I'd never agreed to make this trip. I can't get rid of the feeling that I'm walking into a death trap. What an optimist. Perkins, five will get you ten. We'll make it to the plantation safe and sound. Well, you will pardon me if I do not accept your wager, Mitchell, but I certainly hope you're right. <laughs> Hey, watch out! Hey, what? What, what is it? Up in that tree! Whoa. I got him. Oh. Mitchell! Oh, I told you to have scouts watching. Uh, get your head up out of the dirt and take a look, Perkins. Hmm? That was no scout, unless they're wearing snake skins these days. What? Oh, oh dear. Python. Fifteen feet if he's an inch. Thanks, old chap. Looks like the rascal had zeroed in on me. Great. We've not only got bandits to watch out for, now it's snakes yet. Come on, let's speed it up a little, huh? Well, here's our first plantation. Well, we made it after all. Yeah. Hey, quite a spread. 
Who owns it? Absentee Corporation. Oh, boy, the resident manager is a chap named Hartford. He's um, standing there by the checking shed. Mm, British? Uh, no, no, American. Oh. Hello, Willoughby. Afternoon, Hartford. Uh, still poking around the bushes looking for the bandits? Quite. Uh, Hartford, I'd like you to meet Mr. Mitchell, a newspaper correspondent. Pleased to meet you, Hartford. A little off your beat up in this neck of the woods, aren't you, Mitchell? Oh, I don't know. My beat's where there's news, Hartford. And these attacks on the plantations come under that heading, I think. Troops arrived yet, Hartford? Uh, yeah, they're dug in around the edge of the plantation. Say, uh, according to that meeting all of us had two weeks ago, uh, you were going to put some extra patrols in this area. That's right. Any of them around here? Oh, here and there, Elborn. Okay, if I nose around the plantation a little, Hartford... Uh, okay. Go ahead. Thanks. Come on, Brown. Uh, I'll tag along with you, Mitchell. Yeah, make sure you don't get lost. Okay. <laughs> we'll check for you before we leave, Hartford. Okay. Willoughby. Huh? What's this meeting Hartford was talking about? Oh, it was uh, two weeks ago, Mitchell. We called in all the plantation owners and managers to outline and set up plans for the defense of the plantation against these attacks by the bandits. Then Hartford or any other plantation owner or manager knows the defense plans for all the plantations? That's right. Hmm. Perkins, do you recognize Hartford? I, I, I couldn't be sure. Say, Mitchell, do you, do you think that Hartford could be involved in this? Right now, I don't think anything will be. I'm just trying to find out. Brother... Look at those machine gun emplacements. Oh, the bandits would surely not attack a place as heavily armed as this. Maybe they would, if they knew just where the machine guns were located. Perkins, any of those workers over there look familiar to you? Huh? No, no. I've been looking at all of them very closely, but I, I don't recognize a single one. Yeah. How far to the next plantation, Willoughby? Oh, it's two hours easy travel. There's a native village between here and there and a well-marked trail. Who owns it? A Dutchman, Van Voorhees. Okay, we better get started. I've got no hankering to be caught in the jungle after dark. Welcome to my plantation, gentlemen. Thanks, Van Voorhees. After you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. You arrived just in time. Another hour and it will be quite dark. And in these times... It is not wise to be out after dark. I hardly agree with that. Good evening, gentlemen. Huh? Well, my wife, Sukala, uh -huh. gentlemen. Hello. I am honored. Well, I should say my bride. Three months now. Yes. The three of you will, of course, spend the night here. Oh, that's very kind of you. You were uh, from this part of the country, Sukala? No, I am not. If you excuse me, gentlemen, I will give the necessary orders to our cook. Would you care for a drink, gentlemen? Oh, a little later, maybe. Right now, I'd like to take a look around your plantation, if I might. But, of course, I will be glad to show you around. I will tell Sukala that we will be back shortly. Willoughby. Uh huh? She must be at least 20 years younger than he is. Uh, uh, the wife? Yeah. And she's not from this part of the country, either. How long ago did these raids start? Oh, they've been going on for, oh, between two and three months now. Uh-huh. And three months ago, she married Van Voorhees and moved into this area. Interesting thought, isn't it? We nose around the plantation. It's fortified, just like the other one, but Perkins doesn't recognize any of the workers. We have a late dinner and turn in. Perkins' room is between Willoughby's and mine. I don't know how long I've been asleep, when all of a sudden... The racket jerks me out of bed to the window. Tongues of flame are licking at the outbuildings. In the light of the fires, I can see guys running around shooting up the place. So here we've been breaking our backs to find the bandits. But the way it's turned out, the bandits have found us. You are listening to Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. I run to Perkins' room and jerk open the door. The bandits, Mitchell, they'll kill me. Not if you stay undercover, Perkins. Oh. I'm going outside and see if I can lend a hand. Over here, Mitchell! Okay. You got your gun? Yeah. Where's Van Gordy? He's right here. So, Carla, get back inside the house and run. Very well. Every building is a man except the house. How could they have gotten through the defenses, Willoughby? They must have known exactly where they were and infiltrated between them. 
They've already blown up two machine gun emplacements with hand grenades, and they've killed the troops at the third over there. Okay. Round up what troops are left, Willoughby. I'm going to make a try for that machine gun. I start circling towards the machine gun. Suddenly, a native looms up in front of me, an ugly scar on his cheek and in his hand, a long knife that's even uglier. I drop to one knee. The knife whistles over my head. I dive for him, but he scrambles into the bushes. I throw a shot at him. I don't know whether it takes effect. Then I spot another bandit drawing a beat on me. This time, I don't miss. I finally get to the machine gun, and I swing it around. The rest of the bandits melt away into the jungle, but by now, the damage has been done. I join Willoughby and Van Voorhees on the front porch of the house. The house itself is untouched, but that is the only thing that is. The plantation itself is a complete loss. Well, it was an infernally well-organized attack, Mitchell. They got right into the machine. Hey, wait a minute. Why, what's the matter? Perkins, come on. I want to make sure he's okay. Well, where was he during the shooting? I went into his room, told him to stay undercover, but those bandits seem to know everything else. They could have known he was on the plantation, too. Well, here we are. Perkins, you... Per- hey, where is he? Per- He's nowhere in sight. Perkins! Oh, great. If they've gotten him, we're licked. But he might have done what he did during that attack before, escaped through the window. It's closed. I'll try this closet, then we better... Perkins. Is it all over? Yeah, it's all over, Perkins. You can climb down off that closet shelf. Well, you told me to stay undercover, Mitchell. Yeah, you sure took me, literally. And I guess it's just as well. Come on, Willoughby. Let's go talk to Van Voorhees. Right. Mitchell, yeah. isn't there someplace else where we can stay the rest of the night? I don't... Look, want... this plantation is probably the safest place in the world right now for you, Perkins. The bandits have already done their job here. And quite completely, too. I'd give a year's pay to know how those blighters are getting their information. <laughs> yeah. There, there, my dear. The plantation is a complete loss, but we are still on harm. And that is the important thing. Oh, gentlemen, my wife is quite upset over this. I've been trying to tell her that... Gentlemen, if you will excuse me, please. Uh, what are you going to do, Van Boris? I think the only thing to do is to get out of here. I've been trying to talk my wife into leaving, but she thinks we should stay and try to rebuild. Oh? Uh, tell me, Van Voorhees, had you known your wife long before you married her? By no, only a short time. Why do you ask? She came here to live about three months ago, and it was shortly after that that these raids started. Raids that are obviously based upon inside information. Hey, Mitchell, I have extended to you the hospitality of my house, but I have not extended to you the right to make accusations against my wife. I am not making accusations, Van Voorhees. I'm just trying to find out who's heading up this gang of bandits. I would stake my life that my wife is not involved in such a thing. I see. What would you stake on your neighbor, then, Van Voorhees? Neighbor? The American Hartford, manager of the next plantation back. Hey, Mitchell, the only thing I know about this Hartford is that I do not trust him. Why not? I do not know. I simply do not trust the man. Uh, Mitchell, you pointed out earlier that Hartford had complete information on the defenses of these plantations. Yeah. Uh, Hartford also knew we were coming to this plantation. Perhaps he recognized me, and that is why... Uh, oh. Visitor at this time of night... Hartford. Well, speak of the devil, Willoughby. Quite. I heard the shooting and saw the flames on Voorhees, so I headed for your plantation here to see what the trouble is. Oh, looks like I got here a little too late. Sure made a mess of the plantation, didn't they? Yeah, they sure did, Hartford. Amazing how they knew just where the defenses were located, isn't it? Sure is. It must be pretty smart, all right. Either that or somebody's giving them pretty smart information. Yeah. Could be. Uh, Got anybody in mind, Mitchell? Yeah, could be. You know, uh, you seem to be taking quite an interest in this deal for a a newspaper correspondent. (laughs) Funny thing about a newspaper correspondent, they do a lot of traveling around, visiting plantations. Sometimes it's a pretty neat cover to accuse somebody else, isn't it? Meaning what? Meaning skip it. For now. Well, gentlemen, I, for one, have had quite enough excitement for one night. And if you don't mind, I- I'm going back to bed. Okay, one thing, though. Uh, what is it? Might be a good idea to lock your door, just in case. Uh... 
Perkins heads for his room and I go to mine next door. I stretch out on the bed and light a cigarette. At this point, Hartford is high up on my suspect list. He's in a perfect spot to have engineered the raids, but I can't forget Van Voorhees' wife, Sakala, either. She could fit into the deal somehow, too. Finally, I guess I doze off. A faint sound starts pecking at my brain. At first, I think I'm dreaming, but finally it pulls me awake, like a rustle of papers or a faint crackle of flames. Then it stops. I head for Perkins' room in a hurry. Perkins! You all right? Perkins! Locked. Perkins! Mitchell, open up. Oh, very well. What's the matter? Hey, hey, you okay? Oh, why, yes. Uh, Sleeping like a baby, as a matter of fact. Uh, Why? Did you hear a sound a moment ago? A sound? A faint crackling-like sound. Why, why, yes, but I I thought I was dreaming. Uh, Let's take a look out the window. Huh? Hey, look down there in the ground just below the window. A cigarette uh, still burning. Mitchell, that crackling sound you heard, it must have been the rustle of these bushes outside my window. Somebody was trying to get into my room. Wait a minute. Huh? Look out the window. Over there across the clearing. Oh, two people. Why, it's Hartford talking to Van Voorhees' wife. Yeah, comparing notes, maybe. Or setting up the next raid. Okay, throw your things in your suitcase, Perkins. What? But why? We're leaving. Uh, now? Yeah, right now. Come on, get packed. I go back to the living room. Van Voorhees and Willoughby are sitting there drinking cognac. I have finally persuaded my wife that we should leave the plantation, Mitchell. Where is your wife? She went to bed half an hour ago. I see. Willoughby, uh, any of your roving patrols in this area? Yes, one of them arrived here just a few minutes ago, Mitchell. Good. Let's have them escort us back to Hartford's plantation. Now? Yeah. But it'll be light in just a couple of hours. And it may be too late. I'll explain later, Willoughby. Right now, I want to get started. Hey, well, boy. Hey, Mitchell, as long as Sukala and I have decided to leave the plantation, we may as well accompany you. That way, we would be sure of protection. Okay, Van Voorhees. You and your wife pack up, and let's get going. Half an hour later, we shove off Van Voorhees and his wife, Hartford, Perkins, Willoughby, the patrol, and myself. A little after dawn, we reach the native village that's halfway between the two plantations and start walking through it. Uh, Mitchell. Yeah? You told me that you saw Hartford and Van Voorhees' wife talking together. That's right. They could have been cooking up another raid. Well, is that why you want to get us and the patrol back to Hartford's plantation? I mean, you think the raid is scheduled for there? Could be. Why, what's the matter? Keep walking. He doesn't see me. Who doesn't see you? Over there in that bunch of natives, the gent with a scar on his face. That's one of the bandits. He chucked a knife at me last night. What? Go on without me. I'll join you later at Hartford's plantation, and don't let anything happen to Perkins. The rest of the party moves on. I drop out of sight in the bushes where I can keep my eye on the village and the native with a scar on his cheek. After a while, he eases away from the village. I tail him through the jungle, keeping well back so he won't spot me. An hour later, he reaches a small clearing, and I know I've found the bandit's main camp. There must be two dozen of them lying around, and in the center, there's a guy trying to raise someone on a walkie-talkie. Hello. 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 He's not having any luck, but I am, because a lot of things have suddenly fallen into place. I turn and start to leave, then I freeze. One of the bandits is coming along the trail to the clearing. He'll pass right by me and be sure to see me. I've got to get the jump on him. I wait until he's right up to me, then I dive for his neck. He drops his gun, closes his throat. I know if he lets out one peep, I'm a dead duck. I increase the pressure. Tighter, tighter. Finally, his knees buckle, and he slumps to the ground. I drag him under the bushes and take off. It's the middle of the afternoon before I get to Hartford's plantation. And I was getting worried about you, Mitchell. About to send the patrol back to find you. I'm glad you didn't. Where are the others? They're all inside the plantation house. Good. That patrol leader around anywhere? Yes, he's right over there. Uh, Lieutenant Sheffield. What is it, Willoughby? Uh, Mitchell wants a word with you. I've uh, located the bandits' main camp. What's that? Mitchell? Yeah. Let's see. It's 3 p.m. That ought to give us time enough. Time enough for what? We're going to cook up a little gag, Willoughby. If it works, we're not only going to get the whole gang, we'll also nab their leader. Now 
that I find mine furnishing the liquor, Mitchell, but uh, I don't quite see the reason for suddenly having a cocktail party. Oh, just felt like a little celebration, Hartford. I do not think there is cause for any of us to be celebrating right now. My husband and I have just lost our plantation. My dear, you must reconcile yourself. I, for one, will feel more like celebrating when I'm safely back in Singapore, Mitchell. Oh, cheer up, Perkins. The worst is over. That's why I want to celebrate. But celebrate what? Let's see. It's exactly 5.30 p.m. right now. In just ten minutes, those bandits will all be captured. What? What What are you you talking about, Mitchell? It's very simple. You see, I located their main camp. You... You found their camp? That's right, Mrs. Van Voorhees. Lieutenant Sheffield and his patrol are closing in on them right now. Hey, Mitchell, my heart is congratulations. Thanks, Van Voorhees. Well, come on, Willoughby. Let's go outside and tell the rest of the troops they can knock off. Right. Okay, Willoughby. Around to the back. Yes. You think it'll work, Mitchell? I don't know. It's our only chance of pegging the leader. But I still don't see how you intend to find out just who it is. Okay. Hold it here. Now we'll just listen for a while. But listen for what? Quiet. There it is. Coming from that corner room. Come on. In the back door. Now, down the hall and keep it quiet. Here we are. Door is undoubtedly locked, but it's flimsy. One push ought to do it. Come on. We'll rush it together. Sort of uh, get back for a running start, hmm? Yeah, come on. Ready? Quiet. Let's go. Perkins! Complete with walkie-talkie. Trying to warn your boys. Perkins, he's gone! He's gone! He'll never make it, Perkins! Let go of me! Sit down, Perkins. I said sit down. I've got his gun, Mitchell. Hey, what's going on? Very simple, Hartford. We just grabbed the bandit leader. What? This man? Yeah, Perkins. I do not understand. Posing as an importer gave Perkins a good excuse to travel this area, picking up information, but... When the plantations were fortified, he realized he needed more accurate information. So he rigged up his story about being an eyewitness and the attempts on his life to give him an excuse to be brought to these plantations. Yeah, put him in a perfect spot to transmit information about the defense to his boys by means of that walkie-talkie he kept in his suitcase. You see, Perkins, I heard one of your boys using a walkie-talkie in the jungle, probably trying to get in touch with you. It made a faint crackling sound, just like the one I heard last night. And speaking of last night, Hartford... What were you talking to uh, Mrs. Van Voorhees about? What's that? Relax, Van Voorhees. I, I knew you didn't like me, so I decided to talk to your wife instead to uh, warn her about Mitchell. Me? Oh, now look, I'm not that big a wolf. I don't mean that. I, you didn't sound like a newspaper correspondent to me, so I was, well, I was getting a little suspicious of your connection with this. Well, thing. that's the switch. Sheffield to Mitchell. Ella. Oh, it's a walkie-talkie. Yeah, well, let's have it. Thanks. Mitchell to Sheffield. Go ahead. Three bandits captured ten minutes ago. What? Only three? What happened to the rest of them? Dead, you know. Okay. Good work, Sheffield. Over and out. Well, I guess that's the crop. And, Perkins, after you faced the court of law for the various murders you're responsible for, I don't think you'll have much time left. Yep. You had a pretty neat scheme going, but I guess you forgot the ancient Malayan proverb. What are you talking about? Man who tried to do bad things with walkie-talkie, when law gets through with him, will do neither one. Neither one. No walkie, no talkie. Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jondo, with music by Robert Armbruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Be with us next week at this same time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another dangerous assignment. Dangerous Assignment came to you from Hollywood. Next, enjoy The Man Called X and your hit parade on NBC tonight.
That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.